as women in business and women as fashion entrepreneurs in today's world. Hopefully today we will get to learn about um, firsthand from our amazing panelists what it means to be a women entrepreneur in today's world. Um, we have Shade Olagandudu, who is a Brooklyn-born writer, FIT alumni in international trade and marketing, and a multidisciplinary artist. Her work explores social issues of identity, race, and youth culture as it pertains to art, fashion, and media. She's the founder of Lightwork, a creative platform ro rooted at the intersection of art, education, and culture. Natalia Trevino Amaro is the founder of her namesake brand, a size inclusive slow fashion brand. She's an FIT alumna in fashion design on the associate's degree graduating in 2020. And she uses social media, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Patreon to showcase, promote, and grow her business. In addition to clothing and accessories, she is also her own global podcast covering all things fashion and sustainability. Shara McHale is a native New Yorker and the co-founder and CEO of Hoop 88 Dreams, an e-commerce platform that specializes exclusively in hoop earrings. Before this venture, she has had an illustrious co career as a business partner with the iconic streetwear brand PNB and in the music industry, managing the career of Pete Rock. She's the proud aunt of student Anya Swap, FIT cultural fellow, fashion business management major, and student government association senator for international students. Welcome, we are so happy to have you. And um, if you could, we would love for you to talk a little bit about your business and your journey um, in building your business. Shara, we could start with you. Okay. Well, Hoop 88 Dreams was a, um, is a platform that uh, basically I didn't see in the marketplace. I love hoop earrings. I was introduced to the hoop earring um, in the early 1980s, just as hip hop was kind of being introduced to the world. And um, I developed a love affair. So as I got older, I mean, I've always wore hoop earrings. And then I, I just was looking for like a retailer, someone that would give me a scope, you know, from then to now. Um, and, you know, um, I definitely had the entrepreneurial bug and I created something that I wanted to see in the marketplace and I gave it my point of view. Um, and it feels really good to represent myself, to represent an era that's really special to me, um, to represent a culture that has become pop culture and is really special to me, which is hip hop culture. Um, and, you know, I can just go on and on and on for days. It's a new platform, it's two years old, and um, I'm just super excited to be, to, to tell the story of the hoop earring. Thank you. Um, Shade. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, so I started my platform, um, Lightwork, in 2019. Um, there was a lot happening at the time um, in my life where I was transitioning between working and studying and coming from a marketing background, but feeling very unfulfilled in um, the work that I was doing and feeling like I was hitting a little bit of that um, glass ceiling that sometimes we experience in, you know, uh, just in our careers where you're not sure how you're going to sort of excel where you are and you, and you say to yourself, okay, maybe it's a good time for me to uh, jump off the diving board and take a risk and bet on myself. And so light work sort of grew out of the desire to want to lean into my entrepreneurial spirit and really wanting to build something that was my own. And so I began the process of what light of of trying to understand what light work was and what it would be by asking myself what I really wanted to do and what I was really inspired and motivated by. Um, and I discovered that I really loved talking to people and I loved listening to people share their stories and feeling like I could find a connection with them because we had a shared experience. And so really a lot of the core of what I do with Lightwork is uncovering people's personal stories through writing about them, through my podcast, through panel discussions and talks with artists and creative people where they 
talk about their life and we discover how much we have in common. And it was really about me wanting to sort of highlight the fact that as human beings, we all have something that we can relate to uh, with, with each other. Even if the world is sort of functions in a way where you think you're divided by race, by gender, by, by, you know, by economic status. But when you break all of those things down, we're all individual people having a human experience. And it was that kind of universal quality that I wanted to tap into, but I wanted to do it in a creative way and in a way that would be interesting and easy for people to understand um, and really easy for people to access. Um, and so that's a little bit of what Lightwork is about um, and some of the work that I do. Thank you, um, Natalia. So I started my slow fashion brand last year in 2020, um, a month after graduating. Obviously, 2020 was, you know, pandemic year. So it was right after I had been like sent home from New York. I was back in Indiana, um, graduated with my associates. I thought about continuing on to my bachelor's, but kind of didn't want to do the online thing. So um, my brand is kind of what came out of that. I figured that it was like, you know, a good time to just try it out and if it didn't work it was like whatever um but obviously it has worked thus far so that's kind of what I've been up to um so I do slow fashion um but also kind of have a social media presence I guess um I've been doing YouTube since I was like in middle school but obviously I've started taking it a lot more seriously over the past couple of years and have built that up as well um and I kind of just like to use my platform to educate on like sustainable and ethical fashion as well as just like starting a business and documenting everything that I do and, you know, the ups and downs and um, kind of everything that has come from it. Um, so that's kind of what I do um, in a very small uh, little description. <laughs> I love how you said that came out of um, <laughs> that came out of COVID or not wanting to go back to school online. That's like a very productive thing to have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so um, so I want to ask you, like, what are the thoughts that like went through your head when you were like, okay, this is it. I'm like starting my own brand. Like, it's been a month since I graduated, and then like also things that people told you that made you maybe question, like, is this the right thing? Will I be able to do it? Like, and also like the whole path of like figuring out how to like do the business side of it because I feel like you know, having done the fashion design program myself, I feel like the business skills are definitely something that I need to like pick up from other places. So like, what was your journey with all of that? Yeah, so it was um, a lot. Uh, most people definitely told me not to do it because they were like, everybody's going out of business during a pandemic. Like, why do you think you're gonna do well? And you know, that makes sense. That's very logical. Um, so I understood that point of view, but for me, it was like, I was back in Indiana, so I couldn't get a job in the industry necessarily. Um, and I didn't want to just like settle for any other like random job just to, you know, make it by and get money or whatever. Um, so I figured like I was living back home with my parents again. I was like, well, if like it doesn't work out, then whatever, I can just get some random job. Like I'm secured in that aspect because I wasn't living on my own or anything. Um, but I figured it was just like a good time to do it. I'd always wanted to also just like go into social media a little bit more in depth. Like I've always done, you know, YouTube, Instagram, all the things. Um, and I've always really enjoyed it, but I've never had the time to actually, you know, put time into it and like grow it and use it as more of like a business thing. So I figured that, you know, being in quarantine and having all this extra time now that I had graduated all the things, like it was a good time to just try. And if it didn't work out, it would be, you know, okay but um luckily you know it worked out um I definitely had a lot of people doubt me throughout the first few months even of starting it and stuff but um by the end of like the year so like by the end of like my first six months of business I think that people started to like realize that like it's very legit I think it's really hard for um like family like parents adults and all the things to understand like the power of social media and how easy not easy but like how much easier it is to grow a presence on there than it is just like in the traditional business sense. Um, but, you know, definitely lots of ups and downs. I definitely had a lot of learning curves. Um, the business side of things was a little harder to figure out on my own, you know, lots of YouTube videos, lots of reading articles and lots of just messing up along the way. But I think we've managed, you know, this far. So. <laughs> 
That's great. Um, and you mentioned like it was started during the pandemic. Do you think it would have been different if it was like a different circumstance? Yeah, I think that, I mean, I think I could have done it at any point, but I think the fact that we were in a pandemic kind of helped in a sense that I was um, like, everybody was kind of home and everybody was kind of on their phones and like on social media a lot more. So I think it gave me a greater chance of growing because nobody was doing anything else other than like scrolling through like TikTok or Instagram or going through YouTube, or whatever. So I think it gave me like a greater chance at exposure um but i feel like i could have done it either way but i think the pandemic in that aspect of things did help me out a lot i love the way you phrase that because all we always like associate especially the beginning of the pandemic was like oh oh, like everything's closed like there's not like and i actually didn't even realize that it's so true that everyone was like on social media everyone had like turned online so that's a great way of putting it um so okay, I want to talk to Shade. Um, I want to talk to you about light work and about. You said earlier that it came, it came out as sort of a desire to share these stories. And so, um, how would you describe the journey? And how did you take that leap of faith to kind of you know have the confidence to be like, okay, I don't like what I'm doing anymore, and I'm gonna do this. And like, what was that process? And what went through your head at that point? I think I just got to a point where I was kind of fed up um, and I'm I'm of the mind and and thought process that sometimes frustrate sometimes what we perceive as like negative emotions can actually be breakthroughs like on the other side of that back that dark emotion or that challenging emotion can be like a creative or a personal breakthrough so for me I think I got to a point where I was just like I was like up to here, right? Like I was like, I had had it up to my nose. I was really frustrated with my work. Um, I started to think about the fact that, you know, in the span of a lifetime, you spend so much of the, your waking life working. And I knew that I couldn't just work to make money, like that I had to pursue something that felt very purpose driven, that felt very meaningful, that felt like it could positively impact other people. and. It was a process over several months that led into maybe about a year or two before light work actually started to function as a as a business. It was mostly a creative idea at the very beginning. And I was traveling and I was talking to people and I was meeting creative friends and creative people within my social network. And I was I was really within the first year or two before light work really began um i was doing a lot of soul searching but i was also doing a lot of like um traveling i went to europe for a little while for about a month and i interviewed a few friends and i interviewed a few people in the streetwear world and in the like underground music scene um and in the club scene and i went to cities like amsterdam and i went to portugal and barcelona and I say all that to say that kind of like leaving the, the states and leaving my immediate environment and surroundings like opened up new opportunity, opened up a new way of thinking, of feeling. And all of that really led me to come back home and feel very confident in what I wanted to pursue. Even though I wasn't exactly sure what it would be, I was like, just mm-hmm. trust yourself and sort of lean into things that that feel right, like instinctively that you feel like you're on the right path. I, I I tend to be someone who's very intuitive and I'm like, I'm someone who allows myself to be led by like my instinct. Some people mm-hmm. don't do that. They're very logical. They're like, you know, I have to use like my logic brain to make decisions. I go on instinct. And so my instinct was just telling me, even if you can't see everything right now, keep pushing yourself in this in this way and you never know what's going to happen um and that has really paid off for me so many opportunities have sort of come my way in the last year um and i just also kind of want to add that the pandemic was a very difficult time for a lot of people and Mm -hmm. i you know we we can't um you know we can't just gloss over that it's been a very challenging last year and a half to two years so it's been hard for a lot of people, but for me, it was an incredibly productive time. Um, and at no other period in my life have I been able to take an, as much time as I did during COVID, not have to work, not have to think about 
the you know not have to think about the daily grind of life and then i could start thinking about what i enjoyed and what i really like doing um and that that time away from regular life allowed me to kind of get into my own headspace and think about what i wanted to do and that was really meaningful and really it was really transformative for me personally hello Oh. Hi, that was awesome. Uh, I mean, maybe City's having a connection problem. Oh, okay. City, are you I'm back? back? I'm back. Okay. Sorry. So yeah, that that okay. was um, some of my experience. And um, what advice would you give to like people today if they were stuck in the situation where, you know, it's like they're not happy with what they're doing. I know you said it's like a lot of instinct and it comes out of a desire. And um, so like, what advice would you give people? I would say to sort of like lean into trusting yourself. I think a lot of times, especially with the, like the mental effects of social media that we don't even know all of the implications. Like we, it will take years and decades to really understand how social media has affected the current generation. But I think if if you give yourself like a like a technology break and really go inward, I journaled, I wrote things down, I really tried to get more. Um, I tried to get the distractions out, right? All of the noise that we hear every day the noise that makes you question if you're in the on the right track the noise that makes you feel like you want to compete with someone when really you should be competing to be your best self wanting to have somebody else's life instead of wanting your own these were all some of the things that i was going through like on a day-to-day -day basis i might be at my my job and in, in a marketing office and be like oh well i wish i was on this project or i wish i was doing this thing or like always feeling a sense of dissatisfaction and i felt like I feel like my advice to young entrepreneurs and young creative people, especially if you're students at FIT right now and you're in an environment that's highly competitive and you're in a city that's highly competitive, it's like going more inward and really discovering your true self, what you want to do, what your interests are, is super important. But I also think it's good to have um, things to aspire to. So. There are a lot of people right now who I look at and I look at their work and I look at their career and I look at their trajectory and I, I don't feel a sense of competition. I feel a sense of like um, that, that it's attainable, that a certain level of success in my field is attainable because I see other people that have that success as well. So I think it's a few things. It's a juggling act. It's like being comfortable to take a risk and take a chance on yourself but also looking at other things that have worked before and finding a, a way to make your path work best for you. That would be some of my advice. Thank you. I think you said a really... Oh, I can't hear you. Sorry. I think you said an important thing there about like being so caught up in like what other people are doing and like wanting to like do something else or be someone else, you know? And I think it was really... I like the way you phrase it. I like the way you said that, like, think of it as attainable and like as somewhere you can reach when you work through your goals. Um, yeah. So, okay. I would, so Shara, I would actually like to come to you now and talk to you about your um, 88 hoops and your website. But um, I know you have this long history um, of, you know, being in the music industry, in the fashion industry. And how do you think like all of that experience and the skills from your, you know, your career has like contributed towards your success with Hoop 88? Um, and how has it translated into like helping you build your business? That's a great question. Um, and, and, and it's layered, to be honest with you. Um, it's been over, it's been close to 30 years of experience. And I was a young, um, young adult, um, a young mom. And, um, you know, I was very intentional of this platform. Um, and I wanted to bring all of my experiences to this platform. Um, one very um, important 
experience or lesson is to enjoy the process. Even if you feel like you're not doing well. Um, and in that not doing well, you know, you, you, you get to really learn, you know, you have, it's not like a failure It's like, it's a lesson, you know, and I am um, that, that particular, um, aspect is incredibly, um, important that I had put in my, um, my suitcase of sorts, right? The other one is to really be able to um, not take things personal and understand um, no does not mean that it's final. Um, to, to really, you know, say, well, how can I turn that into a yes? What is, how, what, you know, being able to have that dialogue, being able to look at what you would think is a brick wall or you can't, you can't figure it out, like, in, and look at that wall and say, hmm, where's the loose brick? Where's my opportunity? Where's the unique space? Um, there's so many, you know, takeaways from my experience in engaging with different people um, from different backgrounds, um, from different thought processes. I, I mean, it was really difficult um, being a woman in business um, in a predominantly male driven industry. Right. Um, and in that process, I learned the power of being a woman. I, I, I learned like, you know, how powerful we are, you know, um, and, and the skill set that is unique to, um, to us, you know, to be able to multitask, to be able to be, uh, nurturing, to be able to be, to have empathy, you know, even in a business setting, I mean, it doesn't make you weak, right? It's really tapping into those skill sets that we have. Um, so, you know, uh, also being an entrepreneur or running a business, um, you always want to do really well and you always want to really, you want to make money. Um, but but you have a, you know, you want the why, the why, why are you doing what you're doing? And if that can feel really good and it's really close, you get closer to yourself. If you get closer to your authentic self, you will have an enormous amount of success. Um, and, and I see that um, in real time with um, my peers, with people that inspire me and with myself, you know, if you get closer to your authentic self and, um, and the, and, and you know the why, and then on top of that, if you can help someone in that, I mean, that, that, that's to me is the recipe. I think you said something really important there about how as women, the things that are thought of as like weak, that they're actually our strengths and like our empathy is a powerful tool. And I'm so happy you touched upon that because the next thing I wanna ask all of our speakers is, do you think that being a woman has made it harder for you to start your business? And if so, in what ways do you think it impacted you and how did you overcome challenges that, um, that it, you know, that you face because of that? It's extremely difficult to be a woman in business. I mean, we, there's ego involved, right? Um, and there's power and respect involved. Um, and typically we are not looked at in that powerful and space and we're objectified and you know how do you navigate those waters um it's it's still difficult it's not as difficult but the the i think fossil said it really well is when you go inward you know and you tap into everything that you know you are you know gender does not become a factor so it's really 
you know, what is we have to go in and tap into our power, but it is difficult. Thank you. Um, Natalia, coming back to you, do you think in the fashion industry, it was as hard for you as a woman to like start your business? I think that the biggest difficulty I found with like being a woman in business, even if it was fashion, is just that I didn't get taken as seriously as mm -hmm. I feel like my male counterparts would have, okay. um, especially being like a young woman, because I started my business when I was 20. So it's like, you know, it less likely for people to take me seriously in that aspect. Um, but I feel like in a sense, it can be somewhat easier in the fashion industry as a woman, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like if you look at some of the top designers and biggest names, they're still mostly men, which I find very ironic considering it's such like a woman focused industry. Right. Um, but I do think that is starting to change a lot. And I find that um, it wasn't as difficult for me in that aspect because I also just like grew it over social media. So I kind of like found an audience that obviously supported me and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So it wasn't like I was in a, some corporate space where I feel like I would have felt it more because um, I kind of made my own space. But I think that the biggest thing was I just feel like I haven't been taken as seriously, like just in general um, as a business owner, as I feel like I would have if I were like a guy doing this at 20 years old. But you know, <laughs> we're still doing it and we're still good. <laughs> of course, we're still thriving and definitely going to prove everyone wrong. I hope all of you. <laughs> yes. Um, Shali, do you have anything to add in terms of being a woman in your industry and doing the work that you do? Sure, sure. So I predominantly work in the art space um, and there are a lot of women in the art space. So like my personal experience is that even though the art world as we know it quite popularly and more generally is usually like a white male dominated space, the like the space that I occupy in talking to artists of color, mostly black artists, painters, sculptors, ceramic artists of all, you know, artists of all kinds. Um, I find that there are a lot of women that I am very close to professionally that are part of my support system, that are part of my mentorship. Um, and what I, what I feel and what I've experienced are a few things. One is that sometimes there's a lot of competition between women and between the black women that I know in the art world, because even if there are a lot of us, it's like there's this feeling that if you're if you're a black woman in the art world working in a traditionally white space, and what I mean by that is a white institution, so a place that's owned, operated, and sort of run by all white people in the art world, and you're the only black person in that space, that if another black person comes into that space, that you and that other person are somehow now in competition. This is a very typical thing that I've seen and experienced firsthand. So that's one side of being a woman in the world that I'm in. And another side of that is feeling a lot of camaraderie among the women that I that I am close to in the art world, where we are championing each other, where we really want to be very supportive of each other, and where traditionally there might have been a Traditionally, the person who's in a role might have been a gatekeeper in the sense of keeping the gate closed, that now this new person, this new woman in this role who, who might happen to be a woman of color really wants to uplift other young women who want to be successful in the art world and in the art industry. And so um, I haven't really had trouble being successful as a woman in my space because I think that what I do doesn't come off as a threat to anyone that I work with. Like, I don't really, a lot of my work centers on writing. So that might not be clear to everyone, um, but I just want to share so you kind of know what I do. But most of my work involves interviewing and, and or writing about art and artists and creative people. And so in that, in that space that I occupy, when I'm talking to someone who works at a gallery or someone who advises clients on purchasing art, or if I'm talking to an artist, there's no direct competition. That's a very key point. It's almost like I'm insulated from a lot of um, drama 
because I'm not in a role where I have to compete with anyone very much. Um, and it's, it's something that I wouldn't have known had I not had the experience of being in this spot and doing what I'm doing. Um, but I also feel that there is an asset, there's, there are assets and certain things that women bring to the world, to life, to business, to relationships that, it, that is incredibly special. And I love working with strong, confident, powerful, non-competitive women. Like we're not competing, you're competing to be better, your best self, you're not competing with me. Like those are the kinds of relationships that I'm working on building more and more of. And those are the kinds of relationships that I gravitate towards. So I, I feel that being a woman and being a woman of color and being an entrepreneur today, like I have more opportunity than ever. I have more chances than ever. There is no glass ceiling. I feel like at no other time in the world, in, in like what we consider modern history, have women had as many opportunities as they do now. And so I, I, I'm of the mind that it's important to focus on the good and it's important to focus on where you can make progress and not focus on things that are like negative and like will, will make it more difficult to be successful, right? Like, because I know the kind of person I am. If I'm upset or irritated about something, it's going to have an effect on how I function. So when I'm happy, when I'm productive, when I'm inspired, those are the, the strong moments where I'm very progressive in my thinking and very progressive in my action. Um, so all in all, I just feel incredibly lucky and I feel incredibly grateful for, for all of the things that have happened to me in the in the past year and a half, two years, and all of the things that are continuously happening um, as a woman in, in in the arts and as a woman, you know, entrepreneur. Thank you. I love that you said that the camaraderie is so important, and I really wish we all get to that place where. Um, you know, where we can have that and we're not in competition with each other because I think that will just help us all grow and excel and kind of be the best versions of ourselves, like you said. Um, so I know Helen put in the chat, does anyone have any questions? Of, uh, um, just please feel free to type in your questions or raise a hand to like, you know, if you wanna ask something, um, we're um, open for that and I, I'm sure our panelists would love to. Yes, Professor Nagel. Yes, first of all, thank you for the amazing um, yeah, presentations also. Um, I have a question about um, the international aspect. So um, uh, so how is really the other cultures like um, Shadi, you were in Barcelona in all of these places also outside. Uh, what kind of a difference did it make um, to all of you also these kind of international um, yeah, experiences that you that you had? I think that that's a really big question. So, and I could I could answer it from a lot of angles, but I want to keep it short and sweet. I think that traveling has been essential to my personal and professional growth. I think that being able to connect with, meet, and just be around people from different walks of life who have different perspectives, who see the world in an, in a way that that I don't see the world opens me up to new possibility opens me up to new ways of thinking and new ways of experiencing and it's been essential in my success because it's it allows me to broaden my horizons and so um I think it's invaluable and it's been very helpful for me to travel, to see the world, to see other places, to see other people, and then come back to the US and come back to New York specifically with like a new state of mind, for sure. And Natalia, do you think studying abroad in Florence that year, do you think it contributed to your success in any way or like the way you look at, you know, your business and yeah, I think I would have to second um, that uh, traveling has definitely been like a huge part of my personality. Um, mostly just like, because I was born in Spain, I lived in Mexico, and then I went to the States. And then like I studied abroad in France in high school, and then studied abroad in Italy in um, college. And I'm currently in Spain again right now. <laughs> um, so it's definitely something that's always been a part of my life. And I think it's something that has definitely um given me a lot of inspiration it's always good to get out of like your comfort zone um and kind of you know see other perspectives and 
um, understand others and all those things. And I think that's really essential for business because a lot of business is, you know, socializing with people and like connecting with people and your customers and stuff. And I think that I've been able to get a wider audience because I'm able to understand people like that um, just because I've been so out of my comfort zone and out in so many different places all the time, which has been definitely like an essential part of business and my life and all the things. And I think everybody should definitely do it at some point. Yes. Um, yeah. And besides that, it's also fun. <laughs> no, but <laughs> no, but I agree with a lot of what you said, because I'm an international student myself and it's like, coming to the coming to the us is like a whole different world and you like understand all of these different sensibilities that add so much to your confidence and your ability to understand and grasp things and just you know respect for different ways of doing things um and we have a question in the chat actually it says all the speakers have met success where do you see yourselves in like 10 years or the things that you expect to still accomplish in your journeys so obviously this is to everyone, um, all the panelists. So please feel free to answer that. Uh, for me, I see a space of philanthropy um, and giving back to underserved communities, especially uh, young women. Um, and that's what I that's what I see 10 years down the road for me. I think for me, um, I, 10 years from now, will still be pretty young in business, I feel like. Um, <laughs> but I hope to bring a lot more light to the sustainable and ethical fashion space and start to bring a lot more um, just like education around that, um, especially ethics. I'm like very big on that. I feel like a lot of people are more on the sustainability side, but I think ethics needs to be met um, first before we can think of the earth, just because I think people are more important to take care of. Um, so I really hope to bring, you know, light to that space, um, in whatever way that I can. Okay. Um, I think for me, I definitely see myself, um, probably having written one or two books or more, um, like writing a significant body of work is something that's really important to me. It's like a new goal. Um, and I think that I'm really excited about the art world and I'm really excited about young creative black artists who are doing amazing things and just wanting to champion and support them. Um, but I also sort of um, maybe see myself like living somewhere in the Mediterranean, like <laughs> and having Oh, sorry. No, everything's good. So um, I love all of your answers. I think it's so important to like sort of re keep reevaluating, you know, where we're going and what we actually want to do and like the core and crux of why, you know, you, you do the work that you do. Um, again, please send in more questions. They would love to answer them, but in the meantime, if there are no questions, I just want to ask you, like, so you all mentioned the pandemic being a big part of your business, especially because you have started before the pandemic. And, you know, it's been a significant part of the length of when you've been in business. Um, how do you think like the lessons that you've learned during the pandemic are going to impact your strategy and consciousness of like how you develop and grow your brands and your businesses. It's open to anyone who wants to take it. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll, I will just say I, I'm probably the oldest person on this chat uh, on this on this panel. And I will tell you that the pandemic and social and and you know being on social media and that learning that is my biggest learning curve okay. for me um you know i know how i if you i'm a, i'm an analog person and it's and it, it was a challenge it was a, a it was a leap 
into the e-commerce space for me. And it was, I learned there's so much opportunity. It's just like everything is sped up. What I, what would take, you know, ooh, five years to do um, can be done successfully in two and a half years, you know, uh, using that medium, that platform. Um, I'm almost to, so I'm, I'm doing, you know, my education cause you're always learning. And I just want to say when you get older, it's like, you just don't stop. You always learning. You're always evolving. You will have maybe four or five potentially identities, careers, because you'll just, it, it's just going to change, especially if you, if you are tapping into yourself and you're being fluid and you're saying what interested me when I was 22 is not really interesting to me at 30 anymore or at 28. So, um, so for me, you know, I, I just noticed that there's a, been a, a, an enormous amount of opportunity because of the pandemic and how powerful the tech and digital uh, community and platform is. Yeah, so just kind of putting that out there. Thank you. Um, we have a question in the chat. It says, my question is following a mission can be sometimes hard. How do you stay true to your core values? I, 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 for me, it's because I always understand my why. And once you know your why and you know your purpose, it's, it's really hard to, to get away from that, especially if you're passionate about it, the why and your purpose. Natalia Shade. Yeah, I think um, kind of seconding that and kind of back to the question that you're asking about the pandemic, I think that the pandemic definitely forced me to slow down and reflect and actually figure out what those priorities were um, and what those values are that I do want to have. Um, so I think that just moving forward with that is always just reminding yourself of what your values are and like really having those solidified um, with every like step you're taking in business or your personal life or whatever, like anything that I try to do, I really try to like look back on the ethics of it, the sustainability aspect of it, like whether or not it really represents me as a person and as like my values and stuff. Um, so it kind of just all mixes it to that. Yeah, um, and just kind of piggybacking on what all of the panelists have said, I definitely agree that some of my experiences have some of my experiences and thus the way I feel are very similar. I think I was having an interview with an artist recently and I, their response was really funny. I found it funny, but I was like, how do you stay, what do you do to stay centered? Or I was like, how do you stay centered? And you know, sometimes you ask people these very like esoteric questions and they're like, like you're kind of just asking to see what they're gonna say. And so he was like, the trick to stay to stay centered is just to stay centered. And of course that was kind of one of those answers where you're like, well, what does that mean? But I think it was so simple and so to the point that it was very revealing in that, you know, your core values are not gonna change with the wind, right? Like, I think the question is interesting. It's like, my question is following a mission can sometimes be hard. How do you stay true to your core values? Well, life will, will change, you will change, the environments that you're in will always change. But if you have a, like, if you have values that you believe in and that you stay true to, it doesn't matter what happens outside of you. It doesn't matter what come what comes your way or what you're presented with on the on the journey of life, you will be sort of fortified and strong and mm, solid in what you believe, in your perspective and in what's important to you. Um, and I think, you know, for me, like the question really goes back to like integrity, right? It's like it, whether either you have it or you don't. And some people have integrity and you can see it in the way that they work and the fact that they won't try to like weasel someone over, that they'll do the right thing by people. And then you come across other people who have no integrity. And the difference is so clear. Um, and so I think having a, a, le a level of integrity is essential to I think having a meaningful life. That's just my perspective. Um, and then as far as the pandemic, 
I would agree with Natalia that, you know, there was just, there was so much time to reflect and reflection has been really a powerful transformative thing in my life that has allowed me to move forward in a better way. Um, and those have been my personal experiences. Okay, um, thank you, all three of you. I think, oh my God, after now, I have so many follow-up questions, I'm not gonna lie, but <laughs> we're at one o'clock. So I want to thank all of you for joining us today. I wanna thank our speakers and our panelists for sharing their work and their experiences and their journeys to being successful entrepreneurs today. And thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for agreeing to speak. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Uh, right now, okay. Thanks, City. Thanks, everybody. It was wonderful. Excellent, bravo. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, I have no words. See, this was great again. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yay, okay, thank you. <laughs>